you know what that sound means. It's time for another review, and today we're going to review yet another B-movie. Classic. You, you know, no, it's it's not a classic. Uh, it is a B-movie uh, in every sense of the word. It's called Kung Fu of Eight Drunkards, directed by Wu Ma, who you may remember from other things. Okay, so right off the bat, let's talk about this movie's title. They're not eight drunk dudes, so immediately this movie fails to deliver on its promise, and that pisses me off greatly. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I mean... It's it, like, it, isn't there like an eight, like, isn't some? Isn't the number eight in, like, drunk fighting or drunken kung fu, like, a, isn't there like eight immortals or something like that? Oh, okay, that's what they might, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think, you, no, no, you're right. It's like, they kept saying the eight immortals, so it's like... Eight dudes help develop the style. Again, I'm not... I started doing the same thing, though. Like, I started fucking counting. I'm like, all right, there's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, this movie is... It's it's no good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's pretty unwatchable. Y- you know what? I'll say this. This movie has a problem that a lot of the you know, not A-level kung fu movies ha- have, like, the ones that don't have, like, Jet Li or, like, Sammo Hung or Jackie Chan, like, the big-name dudes. This has that problem where if they're not fighting, it is absolutely unwatchable. See, you know what was weird for me is, like, this is one of the first... You know what, and this might actually have to... This might have to do with the fact that the print of this movie, or, like, yeah. the, way that we, the way that we watched it, I, it's like, you ever watch like, like back in the day, like remember when they used to like put clips from family guy up on YouTube and they'd like really zoom in, it would be like cropped. Oh yeah. This, okay. I was, I'm glad you mentioned that because that, that is in my notes. This movie was obviously originally re, re, ah, sorry, excuse me, released in widescreen, just like, you know, just about everything else was back in the day. So this is from 1970. I looked online and on YouTube, there's a copy that's in widescreen. And just the opening shot, I thought, wow, the transfer they have on Tubi is terrible. Because this movie, in addition to being bad, and in addition to the cinematography being bad, I can only say that's partly the fault of the movie makers. Because oh, you lose a lot in the specific copy that they have on Tubi pretty apparent like you'll be watching like the the Tubi version and it's like like a, only a third of a character's face is on screen yeah. and the rest uh, of I was gonna, its face. I was I was going <laughs> to say step 1 when shooting a subject make sure his entire face is on screen that that's some cinematography 101 Yeah Yeah no it, it's it's no good Yeah so this is yeah it's 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 not a good movie and there's a lot wrong with it uh well, I mean, does this even have a plot? I mean, it does. It it stumbles out of the gate. This movie takes about 20 minutes to get to where it needs to go. Because you have all these characters that are being introduced. And you know how usually when you have even a small ensemble of like three or four characters, there's some uniting factor or, or some theme in all the scenes that in one way make them all related? Oh, yeah. Like there, there wasn't any of that unity. You had, what's the guy with the the like protruding head because the bald cap wig is so <laughs> shitty? Oh I man! Call him Ro- I called him Rogaine. Yeah. Uh, so Rogaine. I think his, his name is Monkey in the movie. I think. Yeah. So Monkey is just like stealing shit from somebody, and then there's the whole thing about the guy with. He doesn't look like Jackie Chan, but he has that 80s Jackie Chan hair flow. Uh, I don't remember his name. We'll just call him Lei Wu Long, you know, the guy from Tekken, (laughs) who also (laughs) studies drunken boxing. Mm -hmm. No, if you, like, press square and triangle or whatever, it, like, it makes him stagger, and then you can use drunk kung fu moves. Anyway, little aside, but... So Lei Wu Long, uh, as we're just going to call What is his real name? It's like, is it Shen Feng? Yeah, Shen Feng. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I, I looked it up. <laughs> I had to, because I'm like, I, 
I, I'm going to refer to these characters by who they look like. And yeah, I'm, you know I'm, what? I'm, Forget that. We're we're not even gonna, like because they, they they say their names, and I'm not even joking. Maybe a total of like three times each. You know? Yeah. No, it's bad. <laughs> they, they they really think like, oh, these characters are so good. You're just going to know their names immediately. No. All right, so Lei Wu Long and Monkey or whatever, Rogaine, just like meet up or whatever. After, this is like 20 minutes in. And then there's this thing about a, a fighting tournament. And then from there, it's just like, it's like the MASH movie, except not good. <laughs> so, you know, the MASH yeah. movie really is, I mean, when you really look at it, it's three episodes kind of rolled into one movie. Sure. But each episode is defined and has a pretty defined story, and it's entertaining. This is just this is just a pile of events happening. Yeah, I didn't I, like. There's there's it's so disjointed, and it doesn't help that again the the dubbing and the audio just in general is is absolute fucking crap. It oh is my. so bad. Oh my god! You can't really hear a Let, whole lot. You can't really get like. I, I, I started to fucking, like, get to know characters' names based on, like, the vowels that their, like, characters would refer to them in. So, like, the Shang Fung character, before I looked it up, I just thought he was, I referred to him as Hang Hu. Because it was just, like, <laughs> I couldn't fucking get, like, I couldn't hear any consonants. I just heard vowel sounds for what they would, what they'd fucking call him. All right, let's talk about the dubbing. I mean, that could be almost its own review. Jesus Christ, like, okay, we all know the, it's, it's practically a trope that Kung Fu movies, particularly this type, the 70s and sometimes the 80s and even all the way up to the 90s, Kung Fu movies all have awful dubbing. And even like the good ones, like some of the Shaw brothers, you know, that's usually a thing I, I, I give a lot of leeway to, you know, and I, I, or leniency to it. You know, I, I can put up with bad dubbing, but my God, first of all, these guys, like, characters won't sound the same in each scene. And you're like, who the hell is talking? <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> no, because the, okay, the, the drunken master, like the old guy. First, he sounds like, eh, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do the kung fu moves the right way. And then later in the movie, he turns into like drunk Stewie. He's like, you have to do, you have to do the moves the right way or it won't work. Yeah, no, it's, like, it's turns into, there's, there's like voices. I don't know, I don't know who it was. I think it might've been the main character, but like, he had like an accent. Like it would, it would go oh. from like traditional, just like American to like, Sounding like a Mo Howard impression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing that, pal? <laughs> I don't understand that. Why is there so much film noir voicing in uh, Kung Fu dubs? Man, yeah, see, we're the new guys. We're the Axe Gang. See, yeah, this is our Mahjong. This is our Mahjong Casino. See, yeah. <laughs> There's that one part where the fucking, the, their guy walks up, like the owner of the club walks up, and he's like, "You bastards, get out of my club." <laughs> He's another, he went from, he sounded like Eric Idle in certain scenes. Like, why won't you stay away from my Mahjong Casino? I told you you're not allowed in here. I was like, what am I listening to? Or, and then at the very end, when uh, uh, Lei Wu Long, he starts doing this British accent. I'm like, it's, it's kind of implied that he's supposed to be imitating the teacher. Yeah. But I thought, when did the teacher ever sound like that? It's like, and now you serve the cup, drink from the yeah. cup. It's like, what are you doing? He's like, as I said, he sounded like a like a Hanna Barbera character. Drink from the cup, serve from the cup. Now step <laughs> forward. But I can't see. Well, if that's too bad, you gotta step forward anyway. Man, what do you mean? How am I supposed to step forward if I can't see? It's like, oh god, these characters are awful. Speaking of well, speaking of things that don't fit, do I even need to to mention what the next thing I'm going to talk about is? Just based on that uh, segue. Oh god, what is it? Okay, the music. Oh yeah, what the hell? I, I literally said, hey, you want to know what I literally said it to myself out loud while I was watching? I said, why does this sound like Civil War marching music? 
And then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Literally, the next scene. I'm like, you are, you're fucking kidding me. Like, what the hell is going on? That that was the best laugh of the whole movie. I I couldn't believe it. I thought, why does this music sound so familiar? Why do I think it sounds like this? Because it is this, and this being well, <laughs> Civil War. Well, the other thing too, with sound. <laughs> Like you're generally not supposed to notice it, and whether that be dialogue or music, oh, you or dear it. God, sound effects. Oh my, what is going on with like there's so there's punching sound effects, but like there's other sounds. Like is it supposed? To, you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like, is it supposed to be them stepping? Or like yeah, them, no, no, like no. Fist whooshing through the air. Okay, it sounds like a like a low thud noise. Okay, so you know the the lady kung fu artist who it looks like she's using snake style, you know? Right. I don't know if it's whatever. I like. I, I was like, does she have really bad arthritis? What is that sound? Yeah, like her, her <laughs> it's blows like what was like that? Different sounds. Hey, what was that sound? Oh, that's just my shoulder joints. Yeah. Oh, I'm just walking. Yeah. <laughs> It's fucking weird, man. Like every time they planted their feet, it made like like that weird and like it sounds like it's just like a tom tom or something. Oh, I like, I, and it's I like called the her same mar- sound. Yeah, I called her Maracas Arms Lady. Oh my god! <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I, I thought, dude, what are you doing? And I mean, uh, okay, so we've talked about the dubbing and how the du- yeah, you just missed like crucial dialogue because the 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 audio quality is. It, it, it's that bad. And I know I'm oh, a yeah. real, I'm kind of a stickler about that, but it's, just, you know, you need to be able to hear what people are saying. And it, yeah, no, I, agree. I, I can't help but think that part of that may have been a bad uh, translation. It could have been. Because uh, have you seen that documentary? Uh, what was it called? Kung Fu Kicks and something. Iron Fists and Kung Fu Kicks or something like that. It's on Netflix. Awesome documentary. But there's a section in there where they're talking about British guys who were hired to do the dubbing. And they said, like, half the time it it was just about matching the lips or or at least trying to match kind of the the flaps, if you will, or the cadence. So they said, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I'd just be saying... uh, Oh, what are you having for lunch? Oh, I'm having a tuna sandwich. And it didn't make any sense to the story, but we didn't care. We just had a job to be done. <laughs> like, yeah. So after learning that, I couldn't notice how apparent that felt. Just like, cause whatever comedy they were going for was fallen flat. Oh, yeah. The, the only universal sight gag that I think everyone understands is uh, the hair braid boner. Uh... Uh, yeah. <laughs> on uh Rogaine. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, that that was like whatever. At least at least you understand what the hell they're going. It's like I get it. You're making a joke. Yeah, I understand that. But a lot of the humor just fell flat. All right. So plot. Let, let's let's quickly go over that. So there's way too many elements of plot. First, as I said, it's like you meet uh, monkey, monkey, and whatever Shen. Fe, wait, F- Shen Feng. Yeah. All right. So Shen Feng and Monkey are two main characters, and there's some shit going on about the restaurant that his uncle owns. It's always an uncle. Uh, but then there's they just keep adding things like the love interest, which is really flat. And then there's Tiger Boss. Then there's Gold Tiger, Silver Tiger, and it, it doesn't. It doesn't really seem like any of these things are related. They just kind of pile up on each other. Yeah, no, you're right. I got and, and like this movie also just has super, super obvious fundamental problems. Some of the editing is so abrupt. You thought, where the hell are they, or what happened? That scene didn't feel resolved. Especially, here's my favorite. Where did the drunk master go? The last time you see him, he's training him for because after he fights the tiger boss or whatever the hell his name is, the, the guy who who's like honestly like looked he looked like the crappiest kung fu performer of all of them, even though he's like looks like a bodybuilder. 
Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> he was not good. <laughs> yeah, they saved the worst fight scene for last. Come on, guys. But after he fights him the first time and the drunk guy's like, who apparently now sounds like Stewie, he's like, no, you have to come back and train with me. Gets him. <laughs> so so now he's Stewie. He goes from like <laughs> Snagglepuss to Stewie or whatever the hell. But so he's Stewie now. He's like, we have to train again. You have to do it again. And then he trains him again. And then after that, you never see him at the end. There's nothing result. There's no resolve other than he's taken his place and is now training Rogaine uh, as his new Padawan. But okay, first of all, if we're following Star Wars rules, uh, Qui Gon died. That's why Obi Wan could take on Anakin. <laughs> Just say there, there, there was no. Like real passing of the torture, it's just like oh, like oh, you've earned it. Like I'm gonna go on my rambling. You know that's like kind of an old trope. Like I'm just gonna be a weird old bumpkin. I think you can take care of the young rascals or whatever. You know, there's there's no yeah, yeah. resolve. Like the, this is just awful storytelling. And now I know what some people could be thinking, but you enjoyed most of the fight scenes, right? But there's a very low bar for story in kung fu movies. And if you can't meet that low bar, you really have a problem. See, for me, because of the way the, the print, because of how bad the print was. That's true, too. And I I really, I was, for some of the fight scenes, I was fucking zoning out. Yeah. And, like, I, that shit shouldn't be happening either. I, I couldn't see some of it. Oh, uh, one like of them one was... Of the first movies I've seen where I... Or not one of the first movies. One of the first movies I've seen in a while... Where I wish I could have watched it at double speed. <laughs> <laughs> that's how slow it was, and that's how like un- unenthused I was by everything by it. I mean, I would. I don't know if I. Yeah, you know what? That's that's pretty true. I I was begging for it to be over, but yeah. The thing that I could tell though, and this is a really frustrating thing, is the choreography for the most part, aside from one or two fights, was not bad. So. No, it, it always, but nothing pisses me off more than seeing good choreography w- that's shot poorly. Or in the, this is more of a modern problem, but when it's edited to hell, I mean that. Yeah, but my point is, there's a certain way to. Eat. You can't just say that. Well, because this is a kung fu movie or, or whatever, it, there has to be some craft involved that makes it even, you know, bad but endearing or. You know, either either bad button deering or good, and this failed to be either one of those things to me. At least, like very not memorable is is not that's that's not a trait you want to have as one of these yeah you know, kung fu movies, kung fu movies of your right. I, it's just like I kept thinking about Snake and Crane Arts of Shaolin though while I was watching this. Uh and I was like, why are the Jackie, why, why is Jackie Chan or the Shaw brothers? Why are they better than this? And it's because if there is a plot, it's relatively simple, you know? And for, for example, like there's a lot of other movies where I don't even remember the plot, but that's kind of good. Cause I, that just means the movie was entertaining and I wasn't fixated on how bad the plot was. Like I couldn't tell you exactly what once upon a time in China is about, but I know it has something to do with the British, you know, and there's some bad guys and that's that. Like you just keep it simple, especially with a genre that's already so wacky. Right. I agree. And whatever the hell this was, but then there's another guy. But then there's another guy. And then there's a tournament. And then they go to the Mahjong Casino. And then after it's like, what? Can we focus here? And then and then the, the bad guy scratches his daughter's stomach and she dies. Yeah, what a dumbass! <laughs> no, jumps right in the way. Oh my god! Like that. That didn't seem like the smart way to do it. You, you know, it's like the people who break up fights. You know, chin first. Hey guys, cut it out, whack. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. It was no. Yeah, it was just. It was no good. No. Yeah. So, uh, so this movie sucked. So we'll move on to scores. That, you want me that, to go first? Yeah, yes, that, that, that'd be you. 
<laughs> okay. Well, yeah, no, I, I really, I really was not a fan of this in almost any way. I thought the, the choreography, while like it was something to look at, I just, it, it was because of the print, which I know isn't the movie's fault. I just, I really couldn't get into it. It made me start to think about like, how the hell did we get here? Why do I care about any of this? And it's, it's just bad, man. So if I were to rank it out of, out of palms, I would give it a, Oh God. Well, it's Can, one or a two. Add? It's a one or a I, two. I, mean, I guess it's, I guess it's a one. Yeah. If, I guess it's a one out of two. And if it were out of 10, I'd give it probably like a three. You know what? That's pretty harsh, but I think I'm going to push with you. This movie was terrible, and it wasn't so bad. It's good. It's just bad. So I'm going to give it a 1.5 out of 5 on the regular scale and a 1 out of 2 bombs. So combined scores, not not so good. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I guess that'll do it for our review of Mahjong is a Deadly Game.